Hello Flatliners, Dave Marsh here. Just a quick response video on the back of Slime and Dan's video about Rob Skiba called The Skiba Files. Flat Earther tries to debunk photos of Earth. So we're just going to take a quick look at this video, what he made. So, I mean, if we never went to the moon, then this picture is not real. Since then, they've put out many more what they call blue marble alleged photographs of our Earth. The problem is they're all vastly different. The continent sizes change from year to year. The colors change. There's no consistency. Okay, continent size I've debunked many times. The link is in the description. The color thing is fairly easy to explain as well. Some images are realistic and some aren't. But there is a reason for this. It's all to do with how data is decoded and sent back to Earth. This Russian image, for example, looks a lot different to the usual image of Earth. It's taken with a combination of visible and near-infrared wavelengths. So they show Earth in a way that's not visible to human eyes. The vegetation, for example, looks red. Some images by NASA are captured in black and white, and 3D technology adds the colour later. Of course, all of this doesn't mean that the images are fake, does it? All of this doesn't mean the images are fake? Let's just take another little look at this again, a little closer look. Some images are realistic and some aren't, but there is a reason for this. It's all to do with how data is decoded and sent back to Earth. This Russian image, for example, looks a lot different to the usual image of Earth. It's taken with a combination of visible and near-infrared wavelengths. So they show Earth in a way that's not visible to human eyes. The vegetation, for example, looks red. That's either the hand of God, or it's a Photoshop hand tool. Let's just... Yes, it's definitely a Photoshop hand tool. So, Slime and Dan's showing fake images of Earth. Not only is he showing fake images of Earth, this tells me that Slime and Dan hasn't done his homework. For the simple reason, if he'd have done his homework properly, what he would have found was the original source image. But what he's done is just searched images of Earth and come up with the first one it came across, which just happens to be one on TheVerge.com. This clearly tells me that he's not doing his own work. Otherwise, he wouldn't be showing this image with the Photoshop hand tool on it. That just about sums Slime and Dan up. Also, going back to Slime and Dan's earlier video in which he talked about uh, observations I've made and uh, my good friend Richard Hopkins where he tried to make out that I'd actually measured the Earth's rotation. Right, so firstly there's no proof that the Earth rotates. Let's just read a section from this book. Professor Michelson was one of the physicists foremost in determining the velocity of light, while he has recently been described in the New York Times as America's greatest physicist. And it was he who, working in collaboration with Morley in 1887, made the most painstaking experiments by means of rays of light for the purpose of testing, verifying or proving by physical science what really was the velocity of the Earth. To express this more clearly, 
astronomers have for a very long time stated that the Earth travels round the Sun with a speed of more than 18 miles a second, or 66,000 miles an hour. Without in any way seeking to deny this statement, but really believing it to be thereabouts correct, Michelson and Morley undertook their experiments in order to put it to the practical test, just in the same way as we might say the greengrocer has sent us a sack of potatoes, which is said to contain 112 pounds weight, we will weigh it ourselves to see if that is correct. More technically, the experiment was to test what was the velocity with which the Earth moved in its orbit round the Sun relative to the ether. Now, there's been a lot of experiments previously. You've got the Michelson-Morley, the Michelson-Gale, George Aries, which also couldn't detect the motion. Also, looking at star trails, what you'll see with star trails is there is no motion of the Earth. The Earth is fixed and the celestial sky turns. Now this star trail was shot over nearly 12 hours. In that time the Earth would have moved along the ecliptic approximately 32 thousand miles. Now as you can see from that shot there's no detectable motion. None whatsoever. If you look at Stellarium what you'll notice is the land is fixed and it's the sky that moves. Like Rich mentioned before the time it takes the stars to occupy the same spot is approximately 23 hours and 56 minutes. The Sun takes 24 hours and the Moon takes a mean time of 24 hours and 50 minutes. Now back to where Slime and Dan said I, imagine, I measured the Earth's rotation. Now. There has never been any proof of the Earth rotation. But looking at my chart, what I've done here, I've highlighted every reading from the meridian passing over a year. Now, is it a coincidence? that all those readings equal an average time of 50 minutes. We all know the mean time of the moon is 24 hours and 50 minutes. So what's the odds on that? And last but not least, I've got a little challenge for Slime and Dan. This will prove that there's no motion because this would be impossible in the heliocentric model. So, on July 27th, 2018, at 3.45, the moon was at 100.0% full. Now, almost... 12 hours later, the moon is still at 100%. How is that possible in the heliocentric model? There you can see the moon full 100%. Previously, the moon is full at 100%. That's close on 12 hours. You look at the moon with its apparent orbit around Earth, what you'll see is the moon takes approximately 14.75 days to wax from 0% to 
to 100%. So how can it remain full for almost 12 hours? So the moon is at 96.3% at 4 o'clock. 11 hours later, the moon's at 94.0%. So again, my question to you, Slime and Dan, how is it possible for the moon to remain at full 100.0% for almost 12 hours when it's in constant motion? <laughs> 